Okay, shut your eyes. All right. Welcome to to Yes on 802's training on how to pass petitions, get signatures, and get this important measure on the ballot. And you may have already heard about Yes on 802, which is known as the Medicaid expansion petition. This would help lower income working Oklahomans who make too much to get on Oklahoma Medicaid, known as Sooner Care, don't have health care at their jobs for whatever reason, but they make they don't make enough to get on affordable care or, or Obamacare. There's a gap in Oklahoma of people who can't get health care, even though they're working and doing the best they can. They're caught between all of these health care systems that work for other people. At least 100,000 people, maybe as many as 200,000 people, could be eligible for, for health care. Not only would that be good for them, but that would be good for hospitals, especially rural hospitals that are going broke, paying for indigent care. When people who are ill can't go to the doctor and they wait until they're desperately ill, critically ill, and go to the emergency room, and the hospitals and people with insurance are making up the difference. And that's one of the reasons rural hospitals are going out. It's also the reason that the organization Oklahoma Hospital Association is the location where Yes on 802 is located. When I drove over there with my five petitions on Monday, I went in that building down to a little cubby hole that they set aside for this campaign. Hosp hospitals, doctors, medical entities are for this. And let's see, 35 other states have affordable care, I mean have expanded Medicaid including Arkansas. About 18 months after they got it, they had over 19,000 new healthcare jobs. Imagine what that would do for rural economies, local economies, in addition to the people who need the healthcare. So I know you all are sold on it, and my plan is to keep the training to just 30 minutes. So you should have a document that looks like this. So grab that. Because I'm going to go through that with lightning speed. And Nita, can I see your? Uh, I forgot to grab one of these, but let me hold that. And then I'll give it right back. Okay. All right, am I back, y'all? <laughs> okay. You also should have a page like this, which is a permission that, that I'll give to the campaign if you intend to pass this petition. So it's a petition training acknowledgement form. This campaign wants to keep track of all of us and know that we're trained so that we're gonna stay on the right side of the law and every one of our signatures will count. That could be important. At the end of 90 days, now we're at about 70 days, we wanna be sure that we have enough votes to get this on the ballot and let the people vote on whether they want expanded Medicaid or not. So, and then the last thing is a little quiz. So it's kind of fun. If, if you had time to fill it out in advance, we'll, we'll go through it at the end and, and uh, we'll see if we got the answer to that. Okay, so Oklahomans Decide Healthcare is the entity running the Yes on 802 campaign. 802 is the ballot measure number assigned to the Medicaid expansion. So we want to close the coverage gap and ensure that hardworking Oklahomans that don't have health care today can have it after this ballot measure passed. Polling indicates that it will pass. It's in this, it's roughly hovering around 60% of people who were polled who said yes. From my experience, quite a few people aren't sure what it is yet. And so when you tell them, I have pretty good luck at people, you know, wanting to sign it when they understand. So a lot of the people that were polled probably weren't sure what it was. I think the yes would be a lot higher in polling once we're down the road and start talking to people. So the idea behind it is we'll bring about a billion dollars back to Oklahoma in federal tax money we've already paid. For every state dollar for Medicaid expansion, we'll recover nine federal dollars that are right now going to those other states, like Arkansas like Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia, and 35 total, we're paying for health care in those other states. So we'll recover that money, bring it back to Oklahoma. 
Our target is roughly 178,000 valid signatures. That's why the campaign is trying really hard to make sure every signature counts. So, um, going to page, see what I show, page four, there's some do's and don'ts. Now, when you have a chance, look them over really good, but you look like a very bright audience, and I know most of you, so I'm not going to read them to you, but there's a couple that are so important i got to point them out. <coughs> we want, this, and this is where I've been casual in the past, we're supposed to, we, circulators, people passing the petition, are supposed to witness every signature. And the training that I took today was strict about this. On the back of the petition, there's a place where a notary public will sign. You'll sign in front of them, and you're swearing, I saw everyone sign this petition. And so we want to be sure that nobody infiltrates, signs a bogus signature, and then goes on the news saying, these people are not doing it right. We don't want to see that. So you want to just watch over their shoulder while they sign it. Blue and black ink, we had someone sign with a marker. And so I, I crossed it out and had them sign again. I don't want to take a chance that their signature doesn't count. Um, they have to be registered voters, and we want to use their complete registration address. So let's see, their signatures need to be legible. And that's harder than you might think for some of us. And I just say, write very small and super neat so your signature will count. They want us to have them spell out the county name, Canadian, Oklahoma, um, and we want, want them to use their legal name as registered. And tonight we had a good question. I'm not really sure a lot of voter registration will be first name, middle name, last name on the card. We're okay as long as we put legal first name, legal last name, not nicknames. Much, all of that is much like voter registration. So, um, the major don'ts, I guess I did go through all the do's, but they're so important. Basically, the don'ts are you don't want to write it in for them uh, because it's supposed to be in their handwriting. You don't want to separate the pages of the petition because under Oklahoma law, they need to be able to see what they're signing. So they don't want you taking the petitions apart um, to avoid breaking that rule. Um, you, if you have a husband and wife or people who live in the same household, we don't want them to put ditto marks. We want them to go in and write out the full address. And boy, this is a hard one, but they don't want us to argue with voters. My theory is much like knocking doors, you're wasting time. If you, you know, it's just like, okay, thanks, moving on. And then the tips, I think those are um, pretty much common sense. Circulators have to be 18. Um, we can't destroy a petition if you reach a point where you can't continue for whatever reason. I'll come and get it, don't worry, or you can bring it to me, um, or the campaign. Um, and we're not supposed to detach those sheets. Signers have to be registered to vote in Oklahoma. And um, they're supposed to sign their name and fill any other information on the signature line. The exception to that is, is if you have someone who's legally blind. I don't see, and now I work for an agency where a lot of people that are signing my petition are really blind, honestly. They're unable to fill it in, I fill it in, and there's technically, for the blind person, there are little signature guides that have a little hole where they can write, looks like a credit card with a slot, and they can write, or I'll put my fingers on either side and let them sign. That may not happen to you, but I don't want to disenfranchise anybody who's blind who wants Medicaid expansion. So that's about the only exception. Even if they write messy, and even if their spouse or friend is there and writes neat, they really need to do it themselves to avoid the idea that they were coerced by someone and didn't have do it on their own recognizance. On the back, the, the part that after your 25 names is, are all filled in, or when you're done with your petition, Shirley's a notary, my husband Tim is a notary, there are other places in your in your packet that this document that tell where you can find a notary bank is a good location. Um, but we'll be glad to notarize it for you. Uh, but you do it in front of the notary so that they're swearing that you're who they who you say you are. <coughs> they might even ask you for an ID if they don't know you, and you're swearing that you saw everybody sign that petition. So. 
that's pretty much the main rules. Um, let's see. Ah, um, did you take the word for the, you know, did you take the word if you say, are you a registered voter, right? Yes, yes, uh, you don't check their ID, and, and we'll, we'll do a little bit of role playing in a minute. Um, you're allowed to gather signatures on public property. Libraries are popular, courthouses, public streets. I've had a little trouble going into retail stores, especially chain type stores, grocery stores, other box stores, because they have rules against it. And everybody's busy. The people are busy working and the employees are not supposed to do on the job because the, the people who pay them want to do something else. But those parking lots are really fair game. I have a lot, just take the petition with me in my purse or on the clipboard in the car. And when I see people loading their groceries or walking into my job or at the doctor's office, I just say, have, have you heard about the Medicaid expansion petition that would bring a vote to the people to let lower income people get health care in Oklahoma? You might say it a little different, but uh, just a question. And they say, no. Say, well, I'll have a petition to put that on the ballot for a vote of the people. Are you a registered voter in Oklahoma? Yes. Great. So now on page nine, towards the bottom, there's campaign location information. And for our audience, the yes on 802, you can call them at their number 405-771-0826. Or you can email them at info at yes on 802.org but they're very very busy I like to call them you can go to their website for more information at www.yeson802.org but for anyone that's interested my plan is to collect and distribute and you'll notice I've kept the petitions at the back there's a barcode on these petitions on page two, which I've never seen before. And when I took mine in, they, you know, I signed a little sign-in sheet and we wrote down the barcodes on the petitions I was turning in. That way, if you take the sign-in sheet, like the one that Nita did, and you, you look at it, I'm sure they're entering these in a database. Oh my gosh, petition, that, 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 that 802 is missing. Who is that? Jody Harlan. Jody, where's your 802? So they're keeping, they're going to try to keep that close to tab on these petitions. Yes. About a week. When, about I, a week. when I signed that, I put just Canadian. I didn't put comma okay. Did I need to put okay? No, okay. no, because we're all in Oklahoma. Okay. So that's a very good question. And when you know from just signing in, that line is the teeniest little line. <laughs> so and I say to people, Great, sign here, write very neatly because we want your signature to count. Signature, print your name, and start right away with your address and then your town, your zip, and spell out your county. Because the way the petition looks, if you start writing, like it says, signature, print, address, and then the rest of the information, if you start writing under that, you run out. So you're better off to just write consecutively without looking at where the spaces are with the printed words. Because it gets to be a problem to write on the side. So I'm gonna turn turn the oh Jody. So yes. You might want to repeat the question she asked because I don't know if it would have been picked Okay, up that's a good idea. Let's see. The question was if you had to put the state of Oklahoma on the line where you write your name and address in. Nope, because we're all in Oklahoma but spell out your county. So it, if, if you're on camera and you're seeing this, we did the best we could. Now you do the best you can and get those signatures turned in so that we can get Medicaid expansion on the ballot. If we do that, it will pass and you can think of your friends and neighbors, family members that need health care. Some of them will benefit. The rest of us will benefit when our neighbors, friends and family are healthier and there's more jobs in Oklahoma related to improved health care. How early would you like to 